What is going on, guys? We're going to jump into the blue set review for Wilds of Eldraine. Uh, we've already done white. We're going to go over all the set mechanics as we come across them with each and every folder. So if you're watching this on YouTube later, hi, hello, um, please feel free to thumbs up this video, give it a like, maybe even write a comment below. Let me know what cards you're most excited about for um, the Wilds of Eldraine set. Tell me if I'm underrepresenting something or overhyping something. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you can. It would really help us out. If you're watching this on Twitch now, hello, hi. We're doing the same thing we did yesterday because we lost our VOD, had zero audio. Um, so that really sucked. And now I believe we have the issue fixed and everything's fine. So we're just going with it and moving forward. Um, so first up for blue, we have Aquatic Alchemist. It's one in a blue for a 1-3 elemental uh, creature. It has whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn. Aquatic Alchemist gets plus two, plus oh until end of turn. So it becomes a three, three for two, which isn't too bad. Uh, it has an adventure. So if you didn't play much of the first Eldraine set or any of the Dungeons and Dragons sets, um, adventure is like a split card sort of, but you can only cast the adventure portion uh, from your hand. When you do cast an adventure, the rest of the card goes into exile and then you can cast the rest of the card from exile. But uh, outside of your hand, an adventure card does not count the adventure. So it's just a creature card. Uh, if it's in the graveyard or if it's in exile, um, it does not count as a sorcery or instant. Aquatic Alchemist Adventure is bubble up. It's two and a blue for a sorcery. Put target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. So this is pretty good. Um, a lot of adventures are kind of designed to be cast first to set you up for the rest of the card. So this one, you put a sorcery on top of your library, something or a sorcery or instant, hopefully something cheap so that next turn when or when you play Aquatic Alchemist, you can then cast that instant or sorcery and get the benefit of its buff. It's an okay card. Uh, next up, we have Archive Dragon. Four blue blue for a 4-6 dragon wizard creature with flying and ward two. When Archive Dragon enters the battlefield, scry two. Um, not super strong. I kind of wish it was just a 6-6. Six, six. I guess it has ward two, so that's kind of makes up for it a little bit. It's, it's not too bad. It's not great, but what is this song? I want game chops and chill, not game chops and play Hotline Miami. Uh, next up, we have Asinine Antics. This is great because uh, this fairy's turning all these people into donkeys. So like Asinine Antics. Uh, two blue blue for a sorcery. You may cast Asinine Antics as though it had flash if you pay two more to cast it. Uh, so it becomes a six mana sorcery. At flat for flash speed uh, for each creature your opponent controls create a cursed roll token attached to that creature so rolls are a new mechanic they're basically aura tokens um, there's six of them in total five of them are mostly positive and one of them is negative the cursed roll is negative uh, it turns whatever creature it's attached to into a one one a base power and toughness of one one so if your opponent has a big board and all its creatures are getting out of hand, you can cast this. Um, you can pay six to cast it before their combat if you want to cast it at flash speed. Otherwise, you can cast it on your turn. Turn all of their creatures into one ones. Um, it's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful card. Uh, next up, we have Baluna's Gatekeeper. Five and a blue for a six five giant soldier with flavor text. It has an adventure called Entry Denied. One in a blue for a sorcery. Return target creature you don't control with mana value three or less to its owner's hand. 
So this is pretty strong. Um, turn two, you can bounce something important of theirs, or right before you play Balloonus Gatekeeper, you can bounce something important of theirs and then have... Um, maybe you've cleared your path so that you have an easier time attacking with Balloonus Gatekeeper. Um, it's a pretty decent card. I think it's definitely on the top end. You probably only want one of these or so, but it's not bad. Next up, we have Bitter Chill. One in a blue for an enchantment aura. When Bitter Chill enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. Uh, enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. When Bitter Chill is put into a graveyard from a battlefield, you may pay one if you do scry one and then draw a card. So this is um, kind of a play on a lot of those blue lockdown spells that we've seen in the past. Um, Tamiyo's Completion, that kind of thing. Um, but it has the added benefit of being able to scry one and draw a card once your opponent is able to get rid of it. Um, if their creature dies or, or what have you, like they... It gives you the benefit of being able to do something after that has happened. So I think this is probably one of the strongest lockdown spells that we've gotten in blue so far. Uh, next up is Chancellor of Tales. Three and a blue for a 2-3 fairy advisor. There's tons of fairies in this set. Uh, it has flying. Whenever you cast an adventure spell, you may copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. I think this is really strong. Um, a lot of the especially a lot of the blue or black um, adventure spells are stuff that you want to copy bounce spells um, hex proof spells indestructible spells kill spells those kind of things like being able to just get a free uh, copy of that adventure is pretty strong it's also a two three with flying so it it is pretty decent i like this card quite a lot Diminisher Witch is next. Two and a blue for a 3-2 Human Warlock with Bargain. So Bargain is like an extra casting a cost. Uh, it's like Kicker or um, Exploit. That's the one I was trying to think of. I th the Scorpion that like kills. You have to sacrifice things. Um, bargain is basically that. It's an extra cost that you can pay if you want to use the card for its bargaining side portion otherwise um it's just a normal card so when diminisher witch enters the battlefield if it was bargained create a cursed roll attach it to target creature and opponent controls so the cursed roll again is enchanted creature is a one one um and in order to bargain it you have to sacrifice an artifact enchantment or a token as you cast the spell so you pay that extra casting cost and you get to shut down their best creature potentially um i think that's pretty good uh, especially for a common you're gonna see this come up a lot in limited i think th this is one of the really good examples of bargain it's a decent three two for three if you don't bargain it but if you do bargain it it adds that huge layer potentially game-changing uh layer of ability next up is disdainful stroke this is a uh, a premium counter spell one in a blue for an instant counter target spell with mana value four or greater this is a one of or two of in most sideboards that play blue it's great this art as far as like disdainful stroke arts go it's not my favorite but uh it's not too bad the cal time one is still my favorite extraordinary journey is next xx blue blue for an enchantment when an extraordinary journey enters the battlefield, exile up to X target creatures. For each of those cards, its owner may play it for as long as it remains exiled. Whenever one or more non-token creatures enter the battlefield, if one or more of them entered from exile or was cast from exile, you draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So this is a really cool enchantment because you it doesn't say that X can't be zero. So you can cast this for blue, blue. Um, and then every time something is played on an adventure, you have to cast an adventure card from exile if you want to play the full card. So this is going to get a lot of triggers just based on how many adventure cards are in this set. Um, it has the added benefit of if you have the 
the mana to pay for it, uh, you can exile your opponent's whole board, or you can exile stuff of yours if you want to cast them again and re-trigger those ETB effects. Um, so this is a very versatile, and I think that that makes it very, very strong. Um, you know, you're probably looking at... It's either going to be cast for two mana, cast for four mana, because you're going to have to pay one, one, blue, blue, or cast for like eight mana if you pay um, three, three, blue, blue. You can exile three things. Um, so it's, it's kind of got that super versatile, play it early, play it late, very powerful. Uh, I really like it. Uh, Farsight Ritual is next. It is two blue blue for an instant with bargain. So again, you can sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast this spell. Look at the top four cards of your library. If the spell was bargained, look at the top eight cards of your library instead. Put two of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is um, Memory Deluge 0.5. It's not as strong as Deluge. I think obviously if you pay the bargain cost, you get to look at one more card than the second casting of Deluge. But ultimately, um, sorry, that was way too aggro in my ear. Maybe I need to change my playlist. Um, I think that Deluge is really strong. It's in almost every blue deck and this is kind of like not as good memory deluge uh, the main benefit of deluge is that you get to cast it twice it is a flashback card so the first time you cast it you get to look at four cards the second time you cast it you get to look at seven cards i think that makes this just strictly worse memory deluge um but it'll be good and limited for sure Freeze in place is one in a blue for a sorcery. Tap target creature and opponent controls and put three stun counters on it and then scry two. So again, a stun counter is if you go to untap something and it has a stun counter on it, you instead remove one of those stun counters. And then once it has zero stun counters, you can untap it as normal. Uh, this putting three stun counters on something really locks it down for quite a while unless you're opponent has an ability to remove all counters or get rid of the card itself this will kind of shut out a card from a lot of the game it also works really well with the white blue mechanic um, archetype of tapping your opponent's stuff it'll trigger uh, those abilities as well so it's pretty good Next up is Gadwick's First Duel, one in a blue for an enchantment saga. Chapter 1, create a cursed roll token, attach it to up to one target creature. Chapter 2, scry 2. Chapter 3, when you next cast, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell with mana value 3 or less this turn, copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. Uh, not too bad. I think there's a lot of really cool um, two mana sagas in blue. And this one is kind of up there with the best of them. It's it's versatile. On turn one, you get to you know take one of their or on turn two, sorry, you get to take one of their important pieces out of the game if they have it. Um, on turn two, you get to look ahead a couple of turns, potentially set yourself up for a better time. And then on turn three, you get to double something. Um, sorry, on turn four, you get to double something. Chapter three, uh, so that's pretty good. I like that a lot. Um, next up, we have Galvanic Giant, three and a blue for a 3-3 Giant Wizard. Whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, tap target creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. So this is kind of a neat mix between the blue-red spells deck and the blue-white tap deck. Um, there's some nice crossover here where uh, you might consider playing the three colors in combo. Uh, it has an adventure on it called Storm Reading. For seven mana, it's an instant draw four cards, then discard two cards. 
that's really overpriced. Um, I think that there's a few draw four cards at the five mana, six mana level. Um, so being able to draw four and then you have to discard two is kind of expensive. Um, but there is some ways to make this casting cost cheaper. And also if you have that um, extraordinary journey thing, you get to trigger that adventure trigger. You could also time this well with like the Gadwick's first duel where you get to copy the instant and sorcery. So there is ways to get a good value out of this instant um, this adventure spell, but on its own, it's not super great value. I do like the creature portion of this card, though. It's pretty good. Uh, next up is Horn Locked Horned Lock Whale. It's four blue blue for a six six whale with flash and ward two. So it's six mana with flash, ward two. Horned Lock Whale enters the battlefield tapped unless it's your turn. So you can't flash this in to block, um, which is okay because you can flash it in at end step and untap it right away or flash it in right before combat and surprise your opponent. Um, Lagoon Breach is its adventure side. It's one in a blue for an instant. The owner of target attacking creature you don't control puts it on top or bottom of their library. So you can kind of cast this as an adventure bounce their most important thing um, and then play this immediately at flash untap on your turn and then attack with it a six six with ward two for six is really good i think this is very very strong uh one sick the next card is ice out Um, Ice Out is one blue blue for an instant with bargain. This spell costs one less to cast if it was bargained. Counter target spell. Uh, so this is what I would say is a bad example of bargain. I think that um, a lot of the times you're bargaining tokens or artifacts and those tokens and or artifacts are usually able to give you other uses um and this is just making it cost one less to cast so say if you have a treasure on the battlefield there's no point in bargaining this to um counter a spell because the treasure makes a mana and you're just man out you're just washed value washed at that point um so it really depends you'd have to have something worthwhile uh this is still a good card it's still um just counter target spell outright which is strong um it's just not worth the bargain price i think you pay play this card but pay the one blue blue for it every time not worth bargaining next up we have ice rot century two and a blue for a two three elemental soldier creature with vigilance whenever ice rot century attacks you may pay one and a blue when you do tap target creature and opponent controls and then whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, Ice Rot Sentry gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. So it becomes a four, four uh, whenever you tap something. And it does not itself tap because it has Vigilance. So that's really strong. Um, again, we're seeing that set up to, to want to tap your opponent's stuff in white and blue. And this is nice because you can tap something when it attacks. So... You can lock down their best thing, and then your guy gets bigger. It's it's just a really strong card. Uh, Ingenious Prodigy is next. X blue for an O one one human wizard with Skulk. Ingenious, Ingenious Prodigy enters the battlefield with X-1-1 one one counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Ingenious Prodigy has one or more counters on it, you may remove a 1-1 one one counter if you do draw a card. So this is pretty cool because... Um, it's again versatile and i think that those versatile cards are my favorite are definitely the strongest in game design um because it has skulk it means that creatures with higher power cannot block it so you because the um the power and toughness of this creature is technically up to you because it's an x cost uh you can plan out exactly how much power and toughness this thing will have 
If your opponent has a 3-3, three, three, you pay two and a blue. This comes out as a 2-3. It can't be blocked by the 3-3. Three, three. Um, and then if your opponent plays a 2-2, two, two, it can then block Ingenious Prodigy. But at the beginning of your upkeep, you can remove one of those 1-1 one, one counters to draw a card, and then it becomes a 1-2, and again, can't be blocked by the 2-2. Two, two. Um, so I think that this is really cool design, and this stuff always gets me excited. Next up is Into the Fey Court. Three blue blue for a sorcery. Draw three cards. Create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. And this creature can block only creatures with flying. Um, this is this is okay. Draw three cards for five is not, is not too bad. Um, again, going back to that draw four, discard two for seven mana. It makes this adventure look really weak because I can pay two less mana and draw three and get to keep all three of them. I don't have to discard anything. Plus, I get the extra 1-1 one, one body. Um, so Into the Fate Court's pretty decent. Johan's Stopgap is next. Three and a blue for a sorcery with Bargain. This spell costs two less to cast if it's bargained. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Draw a card. So you have to bar you have to sacrifice something in order to pay two mana to bounce something to their hand and draw a card again i'm gonna say that if the bargain reduces the cost of the card it's almost not worth it ever there might be a situation where you have a bunch of tokens that you don't need or um, a bunch of enchantments that you don't need anymore um i think that there there are obviously times where you could bargain this to make it cheaper um otherwise paying four mana to return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand and draw a card is just not strong enough there's not enough value there for sure um next up is living lectern one in a blue for an o4 construct artifact creature you can pay one, sacrifice living lectern, draw a card, create a sorcerer roll token attached to up to one other target creature you control, activate as a sorcery. So you get a nice blocker for two mana, and then for an additional mana, you can turn one of your creatures into a sorcerer. Um, and the sorcerer roll says, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has whenever this creature attacks, scry one. So it's not bad. It's going to be... A decent late pack pickup in limited but other than that there's better 04 blockers out there uh next up we have merfolk coral smith two and a blue for a two three merfolk uh that's cool the art is sick wooden swords rot steel axes rust but coral only grows the sword is like made of coral that's so cool um so this is a 2-3 three for 3, which is not great, but you can pay 1. Merfolk Coral Smith gets plus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. When it dies, scry 2. Um, that's okay. It's like par-ish, maybe slightly under par. Um, I like that you can do the power toughness swap thing where... You can attack with it as a 4-1. Um, you could also decide last minute. If somebody blocks with something that has 3 power or 3 toughness, you can pump it up one and trade maybe. Um, it's not great, but it's fine. Misleading Motes is next. It's 3 and a blue for an instant. Target creature's owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Okay, so this is just that bounce portion, um, but it's bounce plus. The fact that it doesn't go straight to their hand, they have to either decide to draw it next turn or put it on the bottom of their library for, and potentially never see it again. Um, makes it a little bit stronger, but uh, it's still expensive. We'll see. Mocking Sprite is next. I'm excited about this one. Two and a blue for a two one fairy rogue. My type of card right there. It has flying and instant and sorcery spells. You cast costs one less to cast. Um, again, talking about making those adventure 
cards cheaper. Um, this is great. This is like haughty gin, but a little bit worse. Uh, I like it. Strictly worse haughty gin. That's the name of this card. Obira's Attendance is next. Four and a blue for a three, four fairy wizard with flying. Uh, they have an adventure. It's called Desperate Parry. One and a blue for an instant. Target creature gets minus four, minus oh until end of turn. It's not great. It's fine. It's not great. Next up is Picklock Prankster. You can definitely, you can always tell when Iris does the arts for these fairies and stuff because their art is so recognizable and gorgeous. I'm so glad that Wizards brought them back to do more art for the Eldraine set. Um, Picklock Prankster is one in a blue for a 1-3 fairy rogue with flying and vigilance, which is great. Um, it has an adventure called Free the Fae. One in a blue for an instant. Mill four cards, then put an instant sorcery or fairy card from among them uh, into your hand. Great. Great card. Love it. Print it. Go for it. Buy four of them. Uh, Quick Study is next. Another Iris art. Very signature art style, and I love it. Quick Study is two and a blue for an instant draw two cards. Perfect. Great. I love it. Next up is Sleep Cursed Fairy. This is a card that I was initially really excited about, and then it stopped making sense. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. So Sleep Cursed Fairy is one blue for a 3-3 Fairy Wizard with Flying and Ward 2. Sleep Cursed Fairy enters the battlefield tapped with three... Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Sleep Cursed Fairy enters the battlefield with three stun counters on it, and you can pay one and a blue to untap Sleep Cursed Fairy. So this is a one mana 3-3. Three, three. So you play this on turn one. On turn two, you go to untap it, and you remove a stun counter from it. And then you pay two mana to remove a second stun counter from it. And then you've spent your whole turn. That's it. On turn three, you remove a stun counter from it, at, on your upkeep and then you have to pay two to remove the, to untap it finally um so now you're on turn three you've only got one mana left and you finally have a three three with flying and ward two it's just not good um Unless you have a very specific way to remove all the counters off of a creature, this is not a good card. It's not going to work. Um, I get the idea behind it. They wanted to have a scary looking thing come out on turn one and eventually be useful. Uh, but in order to make this useful as soon as possible, you're wasting all of your resources to take all the sleep counters off Sleep Cursed Fairy. I would have really liked it if it was maybe one stun counter. Because then you play it on turn one. Um, you play it on turn one. Un try to untap it on turn two. And then you pay the untap cost. So by turn two, you have a 3-3 three, three flying ward. I think that's okay. That's pretty powerful. That makes it rarefied. Um, the way it is now, I don't love it. Uh, next up, we have Sleight of Hand. Is one blue mana for a sorcery. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other on the bottom of your library. Perfect. Love it. Brilliant. Print it. Give me four of them. Thank you. Snare Master Sprite is next. One blue for a 1-1 one, one Fairy Wizard with flying. Whenever Snare Master Sprite enters the battlefield, you may pay two. If you do, tap target creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. This is that kind of good value that I like where on, if you have this in your opening hand, playing this on turn one is like pretty good. A 1-1 one, one flyer for one. Um, you're going to start pinging away at your opponent's life total by the next turn. Um, but if you play this on turn three and you can ta stun one of their important things, it's also very good. Uh, it's not super great in the late game, but... Uh, those first couple of turns it's versatile um somewhere between turn one and turn five you want to draw 
and play your sna snare master sprite and i think that that makes it pretty decent not fantastic obviously but it's it's decent spell stutter is probably my favorite blue card in this whole set it is one and a blue for an instant counter target spell unless it's controller pays two plus an additional one for each fairy you control Yes, I'm making a black and blue fairy deck, and yes, I'm playing four copies of this instead of Make Disappear, because this is way better. Splashy Spellcaster is next. Three and a blue for a 2-4 Elemental Wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a sorcerer roll token attached to up to one other target creature you control. So to remind you, sorcerer roll is uh plus one plus one and has whenever this creature attacks scry one this is an okay card um i like that it can trigger multiple times but otherwise it's just kind of r storm Ked, storm keld prowler is next uh one in a blue this person this rogue is looking really cool uh one in a blue for a two one human rogue with whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, put two 1-1 one, one counters on Storm Keld, Storm Keld Prowler. Uh, so this is one of those early game rogues that feels good to play out early. It blocks well. Um, it can attack well too, but it also can get out of hand in the mid to late game. So I really like that. Succumb to the Cold is two and a blue for an instant tap one or two target creatures and opponent controls put a stun counter on each of them so this is another one of those um tap and puts and stun cards it's pretty decent for three mana at instant speed as soon as your opponent untaps for their turn you tap their two best things put stun counters on them and they're gone for the rest of that turn and the next turn so I like this card. Talion's Messenger is next. Two and a blue for a 1-3 fairy noble creature with flying. Whenever you attack with one or more fairies, draw a card, then discard a card. Whenever you discard a card this way, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target fairy you control. So this is really powerful. Um, every single turn, basically, you're going to get the ability to put a 1-1 one, one counter on a fairy you control. Very strong. Um... It's also nice that it, you get to, you know, keep delving into your deck and discarding the cards that you don't need. I I just really like it. It's good. Also, the art. I love these, this, like, ethereal nightmare version of the fairies. It's very cool. Uh, Tenacious Tome Seeker is next. Two and a blue for a 3-2 human knight with bargain. Whenever Tenacious Tome Seeker enters the battlefield, if it was bargained, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this is a decent example of bargain. You, depending on your situation, you're going to want to sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token in order to get a spell you desperately need from your graveyard uh, back to your hand. So situationally, you might bargain this. Otherwise, you might not. It's still a decent 3-2 uh, card, a creature for 3 mana. So you don't have to bargain it. It's not useless without the bargain. It's not broken with the bargain. It's very situational. You get to decide if you need that instant or sorcery. Sacrifice something and you can get it back. Then we have Vantress Transmuter. Three and a blue for a 3-4 human wizard with flavor text. They have an adventure, though. It's called Croaking Curse. One and a blue for a sorcery. Tap target creature. Create a cursed roll token attached to it. So you get um, both. You get the benefit of tapping a creature, which triggers a lot of things in blue. You also get the benefit of making that creature a 1-1 one, one, so you can tap and then remove basically from the game uh, your opponent's best thing, which is pretty strong. 
Next up, we have the blue version of the virtue. Again, there's a whole cycle of virtues. They're all based on the castles and families from the original Eldraine set. Uh, this one is the blue virtue, virtue of knowledge. Four and a blue for an enchantment. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Very strong. Uh, it has an adventure called Vantress Visions. One and a blue for an instant copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Very cool. Uh, all of the virtues are very strong. I'm probably going to do a tier video at some point to rank the virtue cycle. Uh, Water Wings is the last blue card we're going to talk about. It is one and a blue for an instant until end of turn target creature you control has base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, and gains flying and hexproof so great card all around it's versatile on attack it's versatile on defense it's versatile if you just need to spend two mana to give something hexproof also very good um i think this card is pretty great especially for common um but as far as I mean, I would say Spell Stutter is probably my favorite blue card. I do think that... Um, I do think that Horned Lock Whale is going to be a limited bomb. I think this is going to change a lot of opinions and perspectives on this card over the first few weeks of this limited set being out. I think the ability to bounce something and then play this at flash speed so that you can attack with it immediately the next turn is really strong. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be the new Talarian Terror. And then I think my, my sleeper hit is uh, Extraordinary Journey. I think people are sleeping on this card in a big bad way. Um, and I think that people are going to learn to regret that fairly quickly. So keep your eye out for Extraordinary Journey. I think this is one of the most versatile cards I've ever seen. And I can't wait to see it take shape and take place. And yeah, that's 